Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first ever online information session. Um, if you're tuning in today, you are interested in the augmented education programs, so either the Construction Craft Worker Foundations program or the Culinary Skills Preparatory Training program. Also joining us today is um, Suzanne DeFreitas. She is the program manager and she is listed here in the um, in the presentation as Aug Ed Rep. So if you have any burning questions that you would like to ask during the presentation, she will be answering those as we go along. Um, so here we go. So my name is Alexis Gonzalez Jenkin, and I am the program assistant for the augmented education programs. I've actually been working for the Aug Ed program for almost three years now, and uh, I am your go-to person for any questions or concerns you have uh, during the application process. Um, and so feel free to uh, email us at the augedit at georgebrown.ca um, email address, or you can always reach out to us by phone at extension 6790. So today's agenda, we're just going to cover some general information about both our programs. Uh, we'll go over which courses are offered through uh, the construction and the culinary streams. We'll talk about what it means to be successful in our program and the sorts of things to have in place in order to get to that graduation and to employment at the end of our program. And then we'll talk about the intake process and our application process. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we'll leave any questions and concerns towards the end. So first and foremost, what is augmented education? Augmented education is a supportive employment focused program and it is for uh, individuals that have complex mental health challenges and or addiction histories. And so the goals of our program is to help you prepare for, find and maintain employment in either the food service or the construction industries. A little bit of history about our program is that um, it was developed back in 2004 in collaboration with the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, uh, or CAMH, and so they continue to help us make our program um, even better every year, and they refer a lot of um, their clients who become students in our program as well, so we're um, very close-knit with that partnership with CAMH. So starting off, uh, we will talk about the Culinary Skills Preparatory Training Program, and here's some general information about this program. Um, it is eight months long, and it has now changed to start from the beginning of September. Uh, to the end of April and it is a full-time program so what that means is we would require you to be here at the college for 30 to 35 hours a week and that is from Monday to Friday uh, that time here with us at the college is um, divided up into three main um, areas. The first being um, your classroom theory time. So that's when you would attend a lecture-based classroom and take notes based off of the lecturer's presentation. Um, we also have practical labs. And so that is where you would be joining us at the uh, chef school, which is located at 300 Adelaide Street East. And uh, that's just behind our 200 King building. And so that's where all of our uh, commercial culinary labs are that you'd be making the food. And then lastly in our program, we uh, do a soft skills workshop, which I'll get into a little bit later on. Um, but this is teaching career preparation and also the people skills and social skills that you need to have in order to maintain a job. And in order to graduate from a program, you will need to complete 150 hours of work placement. And um, you are not alone in that process. We have a support staff in the program that would help you um, prepare for and get that work placement. And uh, lastly, our graduates, once they complete those hours and the program training, they move on to several different um, areas in the food um, industry. And so uh, we have students working in restaurants, catering operations. Some are working in nursery homes or in um, colleges or universities. So um, there's lots of different options of where you can go after you um, finish our program. And some of our students even become self-employed and start their own businesses. So lots of options there once you complete our training. Some general information about our construction craft worker program. Um, it is a little bit shorter, so it's five months long, and it runs from the beginning of April to the end of August. Again, uh, similar to our culinary program, um, it is full time. So again, 30 to 35 hours a week, and the breakdown is uh, very similar. You'll have your classroom theory, you'll have your construction lab instruction, 
and that will take place at the Casa Loma campus. Um, and we have, again, our soft skills workshops. Um, our construction students up doing a couple more uh, hours of work placement. Uh, they are required to do up 160 in order to graduate. And again, that is a supported process through our program. Uh, once our construction students graduate, they are qualified for entry level general laborer position. And so um, they choose to go in several different areas. Our program tries to give um, our students a lot of different options of uh, focus areas that they might like to do in the future. Some of them work in demolition, retail. Um, some of them work with concrete form work on uh, general construction sites. Um, so there's lots of different options, again, of where you can uh, take this after you complete the training. Some general information about both our programs is that um, only real program requirement is that you have to have either a mental health and or addiction history. Um, that is a, a, a requirement in order to apply for our program. Another one is uh, to have either a grade 12 Ontario Secondary School Diploma or uh, having mature student status. Um, so that is a grade 10 English and math assessment. Um, here we do our own evaluation of your English and math uh, when we uh, do our intake process. And so um, if you do not have your Ontario Secondary School Diploma, there have been exceptions made um, that uh, we've had students that have grade 10 or sometimes a little bit lower that enter our program because we do offer that rating at the beginning. Our program tuition and materials, um, what's really amazing is that uh, these programs are free of cost to you as the participant. So um, we cover everything from your tuition to your textbooks, all the tools that you need in your lab. So our culinary students, they end up with a knife kit that has all of the tools that they'll be required to use in a culinary lab. Our construction students also have a starter toolkit um, and they get suited up with their um, construction uniform and their steel toe boots. And of course, our culinary students have their own uniform here through George Brown College. The other wonderful thing is that not only is your tuition and your books and your uh, materials and resources um, also provided free, but we also provide transportation free of cost. So at the beginning of the program, you'll be given a Presto card that will be uploaded um, for as long as you're in the program in order for you to um, get to and from school. And so really, it's just a matter of showing up and trying your best in our program. We do the rest. Um, and lastly, what we try to do to make your college education experience worthwhile here is we incorporate educational trips and some work experience opportunities while you're in the program. Um, so a lot of the times we'll go on field trips, um, our culinary students uh, will go to market or Kensington market to learn more about food and different food cultures um, and our construction students sometimes visit uh, different construction sites in the GTA. They also uh, do an annual Casa Loma walking tour uh, where they learn about the history of how Casa Loma was built. And in terms of real life work experience, our culinary students often cater events that are here um, on George Brown College campus. And our construction students do a variety of different projects that are sometimes used at these events and given to supporters of the program. And so we try to incorporate all of these things um, so that you are better prepared for employment um, and your work placement. Program supports and accommodations. What makes augmented education um, very special is that it is different um, in the way that um, it is structured um, compared to other colleges or university programs. So um, in your classes, you would have a professor or an instructor, and those are your um, experts in the field, and they've worked in either the culinary or construction industry. And so they'll be teaching you the majority of that content. Um, but what's special is that you'll also be accompanied by a job coach or job developer in your classes. And our job coaches are there uh, as your cheerleaders, and that's why you see uh, those pom-poms here on that slide. Um, they're there to help you get uh, from the beginning of the program to the end and try to make it a smooth uh, transition as possible to employment. And so our job coaches, they there's three of them in total, and they um, have a number of different hats that they wear. Um, first is that they provide several curriculum accommodations. Um, so they can break down um, material or study material into smaller chunks or um, spread out um, 
quizzes or tests and assignments to more manageable um, sections. Uh, they can also accommodate some individual accommodation plans. And so if you have a very specialized plan um, that you had maybe while you were in school that uh, worked really well for you, um, we can try to implement that in our program to help you be successful. What our job coaches also do is that if you provide us with consent, uh, we will be in contact with your health support team. Um, we always like to emphasize that our job coaches are not social workers or occupational therapists. They are more there to help you with your academic journey. And so having your own health support system is very important to have. And so we are more than welcome to work with uh, that health support team to make sure that we're providing you the best possible support, both academically and on uh, your healthcare level. And then, of course, as their name implies, the job coaches will be working with you um, on your employment journey. And so um, once you start working and doing your work placement, um, they will often act as a go-between between yourself and the employer. So oftentimes if there's a challenging situation that takes place that you don't know how to handle on your own, a job coach can step in and try to resolve the, the issue for you. Um, and they can also um, either um, come to your workplace and job shadow, um, or they could provide any kind of accommodations or special um, conversations that need to be had with your supervisor or employer. And then lastly, um, one great thing is that um, your journey with us doesn't have to stop uh, once you graduate. Um, our job coaches provide post-program coaching and advisement as well. So if uh, five years down the road after you graduate with us, you would like to reconnect to uh, have your resume updated or get you connected with an employer or some job opportunities, our job coaches are there to provide that level of support to you as long as you want to access those supports from us. And our job coaches teach what is called field integration. So earlier on, I spoke about um, a life skills and career preparation course that you would be doing throughout the program. And so this would be it. Um, our job coaches focus on a number of areas that are important uh, important in employment, um, but also just for uh, general life skills. And so um, we look at the personality dimensions and learning um, about ourselves and how we interact with people of different personalities. Um, we look at job readiness and employability skills, resume development. Um, disclosure is a big one, so knowing when to uh, disclose um, your mental health or addiction history, which um, you don't have to do up front, and we teach you um, these things through field integration. Um, we also prepare you for interviews, um, conflict resolution, and we teach you to be an advocate and leader um, as you are a student and um, as you go on to your employment journey. Now I'm going to take a deep dive into each of our programs, starting with the culinary program, and we're going to talk about the different courses that are offered um, through culinary skills. Um, first, we have our Math Foundations and Math for Hospitality courses. So these are our math upgrading courses, and this is how uh, we ensure everyone is on the same level um, right from the beginning and um, understanding how to use that on-the-go math that you'll be required to use once you're working in the kitchen. And so some of the things uh, we talk about is um, development, uh, developing measuring and uh, volume conversion, menu pricing, price factor. All of those things are um, what you would be seeing when you're working in the industry. So having that math background is really important to your success. Theory of food, uh, like it sounds, this is all of the background theory that you're going to need to know about food. A lot of our curriculum is based off of French cuisine, and so there are several different techniques and terminology um, that you might not be familiar with that are commonly used in the industry. So we'll talk about uh, all of those um, techniques, those concepts, and the terminology so that um, you are prepared once you start working in the real industry. Culinary Foundations and Essentials. Um, these are your brother and sister uh, courses that teach you all of your mental culinary skills and techniques. So how this uh, course is set up is that uh, you will first have a three hour chef demonstration. Um, and this is where the chef will provide a live demonstration of how to prepare the recipes that you'll be expected to produce. And then on another day, you will have a four hour practical lab where you will be actually putting together those recipes just as you saw them in the demo. Um, what's really great, uh, outside of just the support of a job coach or um, 
the chef. We also have two students, former students that are now employees um, with us in the program. Um, they will be joining you in all of your labs to assist as well. So um, the picture that you see on the screen is actually um, two of them. And that's actually a demonstration that they did with our class. And so both of these um, past graduates and now junior staff are um, really successful in the culinary industry and are there to help you um, learn as best you can um, through hands-on learning in the labs. And so in both of these courses, we look at basic meal preparation and small quantity meals and give you all of the basics that you need to know about cooking um, that influence um, all the different techniques and skills that you'll need to know. Nutrition Fundamentals. Uh, this is a nutrition course that uh, looks at all of the science behind food and uh, nutrition. And so um, as you can see here, there is a uh, focus on Canada's new food guide, but we also look at nutritional labeling, nutrition in the media, and multicultural food habits as well. There is a baking component in our culinary skills program, and so we do baking in both first and second semester program. And so you will have a baking theory course where uh, you'll understand all of the baking techniques, formulas, and ingredients that are used in the industry, and then you will have a lab in both semesters where you'll actually be um, getting a demonstration from the chef and uh, actually putting together um, a variety of different baked goods and patisserie items. Here in that picture, that's one of our uh, faculty members making some apple pie. Butchery. So we do butchery in the um, second semester of our program, um, and it is accompanied with first a, um, a butchery theory class, so a one-hour theory class, and then you will have um, a four-hour lab where you'll actually be butchering different kinds of meat. One example of how um, we try to make the material more manageable is that um, in the other culinary programs, they only run butchery for seven weeks. Whereas in Augment Education, we run it for a full semester, so 14 weeks altogether. And so you will have uh, double the amount of practice working with all the different types of meats. So we work with poultry, pork, lamb, beef, charcuterie, and fish. One thing I want to stress is that um, butchery is a mandatory uh, course in this program. And so while you might not um, be comfortable eating um, any of the um, meat, you have to be comfortable working with it. And we can provide gloves um, to those of you who are not able to touch um, certain types of meat, um, but you will be required to actually work with it. And so that's just something to keep in mind um, if for religious or ethical reasons um, you are not comfortable with this. Cafe production. Um, this is your introduction to large quantity meal preparation. And so this tends to be one of the uh, more favorite labs that our students do. Um, and so you'd be working uh, in a lab, working on um, four to five recipes that would then be packaged and served to George Brown College's Chef on the Run, which is a little kiosk store um, that is run out of the chef school building. And so it's kind of cool to see um, the products and meals that you are putting together in class are actually being sold to the public. Food, beverage, and labor cost control. Um, this is more of a math heavy course, but this is um, focusing on um, what you would need to know about self-employment if you choose um, to operate your own restaurant or own your own business in the culinary field. So um, there's a lot of different um, things to keep in mind, like food costs, labor costs, and understanding kitchen management. And so we teach you all of these concepts in this theory course, food, beverage, and labor cost control. And lastly, um, some of the certifications that you'll be walking away with are your food safety training. Um, so that is now a requirement for all um, people working with in the uh, food service industry to have. And so you'll be getting that directly through our program. We also do emergency first aid and CPR and your WMIS, so workplace hazardous materials training. So all three of these um, certifications are offered at no extra cost um, and are done during class time. And here are some of our culinary work placement employers. Um, we have a long, long list of employers we've worked with in the past and that have accepted our students for work placements. Um, and so uh, 
if you have a particular place that you are interested in working with, um, we would love to hear it and try to help you reach a uh, goal of, of working at that establishment when you start your work placement or even after um, in, when you start employment. Moving on to the construction craft worker program, um, very similar to culinary, uh, we do a math upgrading course um, called Math for Building Technologies. And so this is where um, we look at both basic math at the grade 10 level, um, but also uh, construction-based math. So this is your review of measurements, formulas that you'd be needing on the construction job site. Construction site safety tools and equipment, this is your um, your uh, foundations course for construction and this is where we review all of the different construction site safety guidelines um, it's also your intro to carpentry and so um, we will be working in the carpentry labs over at Casa Loma and doing a number of different projects with wood um, we will also go over um, how to use all of the different construction tools um, what their uses are how to apply them for certain jobs and what their best um, uses are and so this will be your introduction to um, all of that. Construction site works. So in this lab, we uh, try to construct a house from the ground up. Um, so what we don't do is um, actual excavation, trenching, and backfilling. Um, we don't have the facilities to be able to teach that hands-on, um, but we go over the theory of how to do that because it is important to understand uh, those concepts um, and the foundation sets the um, foundation of the house. And so um, you need to make sure that that is uh, built properly. And so what we do do in this lab is uh, we look at um, some masonry, drywalling, reinforcing installations, um, all the things um, that are needed to ensure that uh, structure is stable and sound. Um, two things I want to stress about um, our program is that we do not um, go into plumbing and we do not cover electrical. So those require higher certifications. And so um, if after our program, decide to go that route, we can offer some support services um, to have you um, look into that as a career option. Metal cutting. Um, this tends to be one of the uh, more favorite uh, labs that our students enjoy. Um, we in this class obviously have a, a review of safety procedures working with um, cutting the material. And so we, we talk about protective equipment, um, how to properly um, set up your station to be cutting metal. Um, what we don't do is welding. And so uh, we will be teaching you the actual um, proper uses of, of cutting metal, but um, um, welding the pieces together, again, is a separate uh, certification that you would need to have. And speaking of certifications, one really great thing about our construction program is the number of certifications you walk away with after you complete our program. And so um, there is your working at heights and elevated work platform safety. Um, so if you're looking at uh, working on high-rise buildings, that's something um, that's really helpful to have in your tool belt. Um, we go over propane safety, powder actuated tools, asbestos awareness, which is very important uh, if you choose to work um, in the GTA in Toronto with the older buildings. And then we offer forklift certification. So um, you will be uh, getting a certification in forklift safety, skid steer safety, and um, worksite ha uh, traffic control as well. And then like our culinary program, you'll have your emergency first aid and CPR, as well as your workplace hazardous materials training. And for your 160 hours of mandatory work placement, um, these are some of our placement employers that we have used in the past and that, have, that students have worked for in the past. Um, again, we have really great connections to the construction industry. And so um, if there is a particular um, skill or area that you learned in the program that you would like to focus on for your work placement, we can try to work with you and make that happen. Now I'm going to step back and look at both of our programs and talk about what our expectations are. Um, and what I'd like to focus on is that our programs are employ employment based. And so um, the skills and the standards and the expectations um, that we ask of you are also what are required from uh, our industry partners and um, companies that are working in the industry. So of course, some of them are listed here, punctuality and good attendance. This is a big one with our program. Um, unlike what you might be used to if you have done uh, post-secondary education is that um, you might not be getting a call from 
your um, instructor about why you didn't come to class. Whereas in our program, um, we take this very seriously and we will always follow up if we are expecting you to be in class and you're not there. Um, and this is a practice that is important to have when you're working um, because you'd be expected in the workplace to be calling your employer if you were sick um, or had an appointment or um, were running late. And so we uh, are very upfront about our expectations with this and expect um, that you treat this like uh, a work experience. Uh, other things we look at is um, coming prepared and ready for class, being open-minded and ready to learn, positive attitude, and being a team player are huge. So um, in our labs, because we are smaller groups and our labs um, don't accommodate uh, very many people, you will be working in um, stations and often in either uh, pairs or small groups. And so um, whether you like it or not, you will be uh, learning teamwork and cooperation through our program which is, in fact, a really important skill to have in one of the top three uh, soft skills that employers are looking for in the industry. Um, we will also focus on um, communication, hygiene, which is especially important um, working in the culinary program, in the culinary industry, and um, some physical demands or uh, being able to be on your feet for six to eight hours um, and an ability to lift 30 to 50 pounds. Your success. Um, so what we like to reiterate is that while these programs are developed for individuals that have a history of mental health or addiction, um, this program might not be the best um, option for all students. Um, what we do suggest having in place in order to help you with your success in the program and get you to graduation is these three things. So having a, an understanding manageability of your illness. Um, this is important. So understanding what your triggers are and understanding um, when you need to call in support or help. And so um, it's always great to have um, this because um, while again we are not um, social workers or occupational therapists, knowing when to reach out to your health uh, care team is really important to ensure that we can get you to graduation. Um, another thing is having um, access to uh, those supports, so making sure that um, you keep in contact with the supports um, that you do have and um, telling them that you're part of this program is um, also a great thing so they can help and support you through that process along with us here. And lastly, having stable housing is a huge bonus. Um, this is not always possible because of the current situation here in Toronto, but um, having that um, stabilized and not um, having to worry about that in the future is great because it doesn't create a barrier to your success in the program. And now moving on to the application process. Um, so some things to keep in mind is that our applicants are not considered on a first come first serve basis. We do have set deadlines and I will announce those deadlines at the end of the presentation. Um, but as long as you apply and provide your package to us before that deadline, you are considered for the program. Um, unfortunately, we are only able to accept a maximum of 30 students per program per year. Um, so we do have a tedious uh, intake process. And so how it works is that following our application deadline, all our program staff review all of the applications that uh, we receive and we uh, create a short list of about 30 to 50 applicants who will then move on to the second stage of the selection process, which is our assessment process. And so there's three intake assessments that we do all together. Um, the first is an academic assessment. Um, so this is where we evaluate your English and math level. The second assessment is a lab exercise. So this is where we will bring you into one of our labs. We'll have a demonstration from either a chef or a construction professor, and you'll be required to um, listen and follow the steps um, that they took in order to produce the same product. So it's a, a small um, little project for both of those assessments. And then thirdly, we have a 30 minute interview that would be scheduled with our program manager, our um, one of our job coaches and a representative from CAMH will join us as well. And in that interview, we're looking for um, the steps that you are taking in order to um, ensure success in the program. We're seeing if ultimately you are a good fit um, and prepared to uh, take our program. And one thing I'd like to stress is that throughout this application process, um, you will not be left uh, 
asking what to do or, or what's the next step, um, we will always be in contact with you as long as we have your contact information. And so um, it's really important that um, you be checking your phones um, and keeping track of all the dates and emails that we provide to you. Um, some general application tips is that, first of all, having a completed application. So um, the application can be either handwritten or typed. Um, we will accept either way. Um, another thing outside of just the application package itself is uh, we request a copy of your resume. Um, so a lot of people are concerned about um, uploading their resume um, and the reason why we ask for this is we just want to see your employment history. Um, and so if there are gaps in your resume or um, you don't have much work experience, um, that's not an issue. We just want to um, be able to see what you have been doing before applying to our program. Um, and the third piece um, is the letter of support. So this is a generally a one page letter and it's written by a healthcare professional or community support worker. And essentially it's a reference letter of why they uh, support your decision to apply for this program. And so three things all together, the actual application itself, your resume and your letter of support will need to be submitted um, all at the same time when you choose um, to submit your application. And then last piece here about applications is that um, if your contact information changes at any time after you submit your application, please contact the Augmented Education Office so that we can update your contact information. And then when the time comes to call you, we'll be able to reach you and provide you with the important details about our intake process. There's many different ways that you can submit your application to us. Um, first, you can drop it off to our office. So we are located at 200 King Street East, and we are in room 524A, which is on the fifth floor of that building. Um, you can also choose to email it to us at our augat at georgebrown.ca or fax it to us with our fax number listed there. Um, what we always stress is that if you are not submitting your application in person, to please confirm that your application was received after you submit it. Um, the reason why we ask this is because um, there are uh, situations that have happened in the past where a fax didn't through or we never received a package in the mail. And so um, this actually ensures that um, you have your application in and that you were considered for the program because we wouldn't want you to miss out on that opportunity if it was um, a technical issue. And so please do your due diligence and call to make sure that we received your package. And my very last slide here is about application deadlines. Um, here are our 2020 application deadlines. We uh, will be taking our very next group will be the construction program. And so their application uh, is due on February 14th, 2020. Our culinary program, now that it's been moved to September 2020 as a start date, um, we will be accepting applications um, up until July 6, 2020. And if you would like to submit your application uh, in advance of that, you are more than welcome to. But again, if your contact information changes at any time, please update us and let us know. Um, and just to give you a sense of when you would be expecting a phone call from us after the deadline has passed, our construction program uh, we'll be doing their intake assessments in late February to early March. Our culinary program will now be doing it from late July to mid-August. And then again, our construction program, we start at the beginning of April and our uh, culinary program starts at the beginning of September. And that is the rest of my presentation. Um, thank you so much for listening um, and uh, taking notes and and participating in the session today. At this time, if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask through the chat um, function, um, you're more than welcome to do that now. Um, I will be answering those uh, at the moment. If you have uh, no questions at this time, um, you are free to uh, leave the session. And uh, if you have any questions that pop up during um, the time uh, before you apply, please do contact us at oged at drown.ca, um, especially if you haven't received an application uh, package as of yet. So here again is our um, information.